Ten days ago, leadership of the Technical University Teachers Association of Ghana served notice to lay down their tools after the government's failure to honor its codified conditions of service, which have been outstanding since 2016. However, according to the association, government has turned a deaf ear to its demands, despite the 10-day ultimatum. The association says the Minister of Finance and the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission is failing to heed to directives by the National Labor Commission to approve documents to ensure payment of internally generated funds. Professor Colin Samayao as national president of TUTAC. The community of service has two legs. One is um, payroll related, which is paid by government, and one is uh, IGF, paid internally by the various universities. Because of the delay, the issue had to go to uh, the National Labor Commission, which is just like a high court. And the National Labor Commission ruled that government should take the necessary steps to write, to approve the document to ensure that those that are, those that are, uh, that have financial implications are captured in the budget. Okay. As we speak, most of the institutions have finished preparing their budget. So when will the approval come and when will it be captured in the budget? And you, you agree with me that if an item is not captured in the budget, there is no way payment can be effected. Professor Mayer says the delay in the 2023 budget reading gives the state agencies ample time to expedite processes for the approval of the documents for consideration in the budget. They should take the necessary steps to have it approved before uh, budgets are prepared, okay, to ensure that payment can start in January 2023. But it's, it's been dragging, it's been dragging. We don't know the motivation. And luckily for us, the budget has not been read. But in the number scheme of things, budget should have been read around 20, uh, 15th of, 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 of November. You understand? So, uh, funny for us, we still have some time. So we think that this is the time to push to ensure that we get approval for, for it to be captured in the budget. The industrial action is also cemented by the government's refusal to engage the association on review of their off-campus and car maintenance allowances. Early this year, the government uh, side wrote to us that um, henceforth the, the, the well-known okay, formula that is used to compute of campus and car maintenance otherwise. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Bernice Abubedu Lansa. Professor Collings Ameyao, TUTAC president, who you just heard in that story, joins us via Zoom this morning for more on their concerns. Good morning to you, Prof. Thank you for joining the program. Um, so just a quick one, Prof. And um, as is expected, there always is a mediator between government and um, groups like yours when it comes to labor issues. We know that the NLC issued some directives. You're yet to see that um, being implemented by the finance minister. But did you go back to the NLC as mediator in all of this uh, when you realized that, uh, that the part of the finance ministry's uh, side was not adhered to? Thank you very much for the opportunity. Yes, indeed, we went to the uh, Labor Commission. We wrote to them requesting that they enforce their own ruling. Yes, so, so, so that is it. We, we, we went back to the court. Right, and what response did you receive from the NLC? Uh, actually, uh, nothing much except to tell you that um, uh, they, they, are, they always give us the needed attention and they will ensure that government side will abide by the ruling. Mm. Do I get the sense that a strike is the only way you believe government will hear you? Uh, unfortunately, we have been trying to use um, the diplomatic approach, and we have done it several years, but it's still not the yielding the needed result. Um, as you may be aware, uh, we are uh, working against time. Uh, if uh, we are not able to uh, get approval before the budget is read. Then we will be in trouble. 
And it is for this reason we think that uh, this is the right time to push to ensure that uh, people who are supposed to work uh, work within the needed um, uh, time frame to ensure that uh, our members will not be shortened come 2023. Mm. I'm asking this because I remember when I engaged uh, CTAG on why they decided to take their strike, uh, go on strike. They, they mentioned a bit on trying to get the attention of the finance ministry. In times past, UTAC has also had reason to go on strike because they say they were not being heard. Is that the same case with you? Yes, uh, it, that is it. Because um, uh, we have written a number of letters. Uh, even acknowledgement has been a challenge. Okay, so if you don't even receive acknowledgement of the letter, uh, how much more will you expect to be invited for, for a negotiation or or things like that. So um, uh, generally, I think the attention from the finance ministry um, is not the best, and uh, we have to have one game to ensure that uh, some of these industrial actions can be abetted as uh, before even the the the, the, the ready are all mm. So times are hard. I mean, we recently heard about the minimum wage for 2023, which many have described as woefully inadequate considering uh, the, co the cost of living in the country at the moment. Well, government or reps from government say that times are hard, we must all admit, and try to balance it. Um, for you as tutor, I, I know that you know that times are hard, but what is it that is making you so sure that government can meet your demands? For which reason? you are on strike to, to demand your quota? Um, thank you very much. You know, uh, some of our issues um, are not uh, uh, financial, that doesn't have financial implications. Mm. Uh, some of the issues uh, border on leave, uh, sabbatical leave, um, retirement, post-retirement contract, and things like that. So uh, we are trying to understand why government is dragging her feet in these issues. And secondly, uh, some of the issues to um, those that uh, have financial implications uh, will be borne by the various universities. And the universities, knowing their financial capacity, uh, have negotiated with the various unions um, based on what they can afford. So this has nothing to do with the consolidated funds mm. for government to think that if you have some financial burden on the economy. So, uh, for me, I, I actually I don't understand why mm. we get where we are. Mm. I, I appreciate the clarification, Prof. So, if government says we are, we are willing to meet those demands that will not put such a strain on us financially, are you willing to come to a compromise? Is TUTAG willing to, to, to reach government at that level? Why not? Why not? Uh, we, we are... We are Kadamis, we actually understand what is going on around the globe. So we uh, we are not, uh, uh, as it were, uh, bent on you know, taking our final pledge. But um, what we expect from, from authorities is to give us hearing, is to give us the opportunity to engage. Okay, um, it should not be like a headmaster uh, student relationship mm. that you sit somewhere and issue instructions that you think that those instructions should take effect without hearing from me. Some of the issues are um, considered service issues and um, this should be discussed bilaterally. Um, government side cannot sit and then just vary the function of service anyhow. So uh, what we are uh, requesting from government is that let's sit now, uh, let's uh, discuss the issues, those that has financial implication on the, on the economy, um, if, even if it means deferring uh, payments to such a time that government will have the resources to pay, oh, we have no problem at all not to go on that path. But if we are ignored, then that one not expect us to sit down uh, be treated like that. Way. So you just want a hearing, Is, that's it? Yes, we, we want some engagement so that we can reach some amicable uh, settlement, some amicable agreement that will be uh, beneficial to, to, to both parties. Okay, uh, we understand what is 
going on, but um, uh, that does not mean we should uh, allow our members to suffer on duty. That is also not right. Okay, the times are hard, and uh, our members are also living within this time. So what it means is that our members will also be gathering, okay, to come to office, to come to school, to come and teach. And for that matter, whatever we need to do to facilitate their movement, to, to make their life a bit comfortable so that they are able to discharge their duties and deliver on their mandate, I believe that that is what we all have to do. I think I mean uh, Twitter and government, because it is in the best interest of both government and Twitter to ensure that members are well uh, no, no, catered for so that they can deliver and deliver well. Prof. What, what is the nature of your strike? Have you withdrawn all services? No, we, we have withdrawn uh, uh, teaching related services. But you would visit campus. I'm asking this because I know uh, for some institutions there are people with project works working on, on other projects and all. Do those people also suffer as a result of the strike? Yes, when I say teaching religion, it means uh, project work, uh, examinations, uh, marking, and things like that. So what is your, what is your direct message to government as, as we sit now? We, we, like you mentioned, that we, were, we, should, we were expecting the budget earlier. We don't know for sure when we're going to have the finance minister deliver it. You're hoping to have a hearing with the finance minister before the budget is read. But what if that doesn't happen? What's the next move for TUTAC? I hope uh, uh, that will happen. I, I hope very well that that will happen because um, if that doesn't happen, uh, then it's going to create a, a chaos um, at the um, labor front and move from the TUTAC side because uh, we have been patient, we have tried as much as possible to avoid this drama and um, we have uh, tried to use uh, um, a diplomatic approach to ensure that the issues are resolved and we have gotten to a point that uh, we think that we can no longer uh, explore those options and that is why we, we took this action. So um, I am praying that government will listen to us, uh, help as resolve the issues so that we can come back to the classroom. If that doesn't happen, then I'm afraid Twitter uh, will still be uh, from work. I appreciate your time here this morning. Professor Colin Zamea was president of TUTAG, and you heard him talk about why the group is on strike and what they're demanding from government. Water is life. It regulates your body temperature and keeps you alive and kicking. Awake is premium purified water treated through a strict purification process to ensure that every bottle on the market refreshes you better. We have the perfect sizes for all occasions. 330 ml and 500 ml bottles to fit your pockets and bags. 750 ml for the heavy drinkers and 1.5 liters for those who always want more. We've introduced our special 19 liter jar for offices and homes. Now you just need to stay awake with awake purified drinking water wherever you go. Come on, grab a bottle of awake water and get quality hydration. Awake purified drinking water, one for life. Remember, for every bottle you purchase, an amount is donated to the National Cardiothoracic Center, produced by Casa Precum. For bulk purchase, please call 0262351251. This advert is FDA approved. Also, buy your three months or 12 months HD Plus subscription on your HD Plus decoder this football season and dial star 844 star 8 hash to enter the HD Plus Oricodo double double promo there are 1700 rewards to be won including trips for three couples to dubai in december a 65 inch tv and household appliances among others the promo is valid from now till the 5th of december 2022 so do subscribe and be a part of this promotion you're watching the am show we'll be back to talk more uh, we'll have a conversation with the gra do stay